All right, this should be the last video we have over the normal model. So again, these are the finishing details for the normal model. All right, so the first point I want to make is that don't use a normal model when the distribution is not unimodal and symmetric. Unimodal and symmetric meaning mound shaped and symmetric meaning it looks nearly normal. Again, the condition is it's nearly normal. So if you have some data, right, and your data looks skewed, so you got, you know, a histogram that looks like this, I don't think that that looks mound shaped and unimodal. I don't think that this looks symmetric. It may be unimodal. Maybe this mode right here clearly has most of the data, but it's clearly not symmetric. It's clearly not mound shaped. So I don't think using the normal model would be applied there, okay? Also, don't use the mean and standard deviation when outliers are present. So even if your data does look somewhat normal, maybe again, it's got to just be nearly normal, okay? But you have this crazy outlier over here. Or you got this one bin way over here with even just one piece of data in it. It's not unimodal and symmetric. It's just not. Even though this part of the data is, you got an outlier. And we're using an outliers, the normal model probably is going to be distorted. So don't use it, okay? The other thing I really want to reiterate is when you're solving these problems, guys, and you're doing them on paper, don't round off in the middle of a calculation, okay? So if you have to, on your paper, write down a couple decimals just to keep track of things, but when you're doing it on your calculator, man, make sure you're keeping all the decimals as much as you can. If you do going to have to use the calculator, if you don't like the storing idea, you better be writing down four to five decimal places to be as accurate as possible. Please, 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 please. Okay? All right. Um, next, I wanted to really kind of reiterate here the normal model. I want to do a couple calculations with it just so everybody understands that this normal model is universal. It applies to everything that fits the nearly normal condition. So again, we got 0, plus 1 standard deviations, plus 2, plus 3, minus 1 standard deviation, minus 2 standard deviations, minus 3 standard deviations. When we talk about standard deviations, we're talking about z-scores. A z-score is how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. So this would be a negative 3 z-score, a negative 2 z-score, a negative 1 z-score, z-score of 0, z-score of 1, z-score of 2, z-score of 3. All right? So if I said to you, what percent of data is below a z-score of 2? Well, what percent of data is below a z-score of 2? That's where normal CDF comes in handy, right? So we're going to go to our normal CDF here, and we're going to go, okay, he said below, so negative 99, comma, 2. All right, so that means that, whoa, yes, below z-score of 2, right? Okay, so I'm right. So again, let's take a look at that on the graph, okay? Here's 2 right here. There's the z-score of 2. So what percent of data is below 2? There should be a lot of data below 2. And in fact, our calculator tells us that it's 90, almost 98% of data is below 2, all right? I could also ask you a question. Um, Oh, I also want to re really reiterate that, that this z-score of 2, that could apply to Cheez-Its, Dalmatians, Boxers, Cereal, Cheez-Its. It could apply to anything because that's what z-scores are. They're universal. It could apply to apples, to oranges, anything, okay? So maybe I can ask you another question. I could say, um, uh, what percent is above a z-score of 1.3. Okay, well, a percent above a z-score of 1.3. So that's where I'm going to pull up my normal model here, uh, normal CDF. I'm going to go 1.3 to 99. Okay, and I get about uh, about 10%, 9.6%, 9.7%. So again, above 1.3. So 1.3 is right about here. Here's 1 and 1 1.3. So we're talking right around there somewhere, right? So above that, look, it is it is fairly small. About 10% of data is above that, all right? And again, this 1.3 could be referring to anything, anything, whatever the problem is dealing with, okay? Next, I could ask you something like, um, okay, a z-score of... 0.25, right, z-score of 0.25, right, 0.25, about right here, has what percent above it? Well, again, just use normal CDF, 
What percent below it? Use normal CDF. Okay, you get it? And the last thing I could do, and we've, we've already talked about this, I could say something like, um, you know, 3% uh, of data, whatever that data is, Cheez-Its, cereal, battery life, months, anything, whatever. 3% of data is below what? Z-score. Okay. Now, I, that's where the invert norm comes in handy. So, 3% of data is below. Well, the, you know, likes below. So, that's where you would go ahead and um, pull in the invert norm, and we would invert norm 0.03, and we would get that. It's negative 1.88. So, again, negative 1, here's negative 2, negative 1.88 is a about right here, right? So there's 3% of data below that. Very small amount of data below that. Again, the graph actually makes it look like there's probably more than there really is. That's a pretty small amount below that. So that's where those different things come in handy. But then again, these could these values can represent anything. And that's what I want to try to show you with this next example, okay? So let's say that we know that adult male Dalmatians which weigh in pounds, follow the normal model, and this is the um, what we use for normal model. You know, this is the, the notation we use. And this means that 52 is the mean, 3.3 is the standard deviation. So we have an average of 52 pounds, standard deviation of 3.3 pounds. Okay? So I can ask you several questions. I could say, what weight uh, is, or um, let's say, not say is, let's say marks the highest 5%. So what weight marks the highest 5%? So the first thing we have to do is find out what z-score marks the highest 5%. Okay, well the highest 5%, invert norm doesn't work that way. Invert norm works the lowest. So the height that has the highest 5% would also would mark the lower 95%. So I have to invert norm 0.95. It's the same z-score, it's just how the calculator works. And I get 1.6 four four nine okay so that means that one point six four four nine is the z score that represents the upper five percent or again you could look at the other way lower ninety five percent so how do I find the actual weight well I don't know the weight that has not five percent above it but I could use the z score formula with the minus fifty two and the three point three to back solve for it so I would just take that number right there I would times it by 3.3, .3, and then I would add the 52, and I would get that that would mean a dog, a Dalmatian weighing 57.43 pounds, 57.43 pounds, any Dalmatian at that weight would represent the highest 5%. It would mark the highest 5%. Anything at this weight or more would be the highest 5% of Dalmatians. So you could actually take a, a percentage, take a z-score, and convert it to what you're talking about, whether it's Cheez-Its, Dalmatians, or, or cereal, whatever. Um, I could also say, here's, a, here's another one, what weight marks the lowest... 15%. Okay. Well, again, 15%, um, I got to change that to a z-score first. Now, invert norm, it likes the low end. That's what it wants. Okay. The lowest 15% would also be the highest 85%. But again, the calculator likes the low part, so I'm going to use the 0.15. Okay. So I get negative 1.0364 negative 1.0364, and that equals, well, I don't know what it equals. What weight minus 52 divided by 3.3, .3, and then I could back solve this to figure out what the heck weight that is. So again, multiply by the 3.3, .3, and then add the 52, and I get the 48.58, so uh, 48.58. So any Dalmatian weighing 48.58 or lower would represent the bottom 15%. Um, now this last one's kind of a tricky one, but hopefully it makes sense to us. What weights mark middle 80%? So we want to know what weights mark the middle 80%. So you got to think about it. I want the middle 80%. That means there's 10% above and 10% below. How do I know it's not 5 above and 15 below? 
or 19 above and 1 below. It's because it's symmetric, right? Symmetric means that whatever's above should be the same below. So if I got 80% in the middle, I should have 10% above and 10% below to make the 100%. So that means I got to find the z-score that has 10% below it, and I got to find the z-score that has 90% below it, because that's what the calculator wants. I mean, this z-score right here has 10% above it, but the calculator wants the below. So I got to find the z-score for 10% below, z-score for 10% below, so I'm going to invert norm, Whoop. sorry about that, I'm going to invert norm here, uh, 0.1, and then I'm going to also invert norm, 0.9, hope everybody understands, whoop, 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 whoop. I made a mistake there, sorry, and I'm still making mistakes, Point nine there we go okay so 1.28 and negative 1.28 notice it's crazy how they're the same number just negative and positive well it's because it's symmetric right so i should see that same thing happening so again this was the 10 percent below 90 percent below it should have a nice perfect number on left and right because it's symmetric so i got to convert this number into a weight so i would do the negative 1.28 equals what minus 52 divided by 3.3. I can get that actual weight. And then I got to do the same thing with positive 1.28 equals what weight minus 52 divided by 3.3. Okay. So again, I, I'm going to use some rough numbers here, but I should be using more decimals. But you take the negative 1.28 and you would multiply it by the 3.3 and you would add the 52. So uh, you'd get 47.78, and then I'm going to do the same thing with positive 1.28 times the 3.3, and I can even add the 52 right here because the calculator will know to do the multiplication first, and I get 47 points, uh, or, I'm sorry, 56.22. So that means any Dalmatian, adult male Dalmatian, from 47.78 pounds to 56.22 pounds would represent the middle 80%. So as long as you're a Dalmatian that falls into that um, particular range, you represent the middle 80%. So hopefully all that makes sense, and that's kind of the, the finishing details we're putting on here. Um, remember, standardi standardizing uses the standard deviation as a ruler to measure distance from the mean. These are z-scores, okay? Using these z-scores, we can compare apples and oranges. Oranges, values from different distributions or values based on different units. That's the beauty of this the, uh, normal model, is that it allows us to talk about ounces of Cheez-Its versus pounds of Dalmatians, okay? And a z-score can identify unusual or surprising values among data. Again, anything outside of 2, negative 2, or positive 2 would be what we consider unusual, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. Um, remember the importance of thinking about whether a method will work. We can decide whether a normal model is appropriate by checking the nearly normal condition. We could check it with a histogram. Remember, a picture of the data will tell us if it's normal or not or at least nearly normal. And don't forget about the empirical rule, which we call the 68.9599.7 rule. But again, we got this great feature on our calculator that can do a lot of that math for us. All right? So finish your homework. Don't forget about page 123, I believe, um, 15 through 37 odds. And I'll see you guys next week.